guys, welcome back to another video. This one's purely for fun. I haven't drawn Disney princesses in ages, so I thought I'd draw Ariel in a variation of the blue dress she wore when she was out in the town with Eric. Thought it'd be a nice quick exercise in cell shading skirts and shirts, and while I was working, I thought back to the movie, which of course I'd seen a million times. I was practically watching it in VHS quality, I might add, inside my head. And guys, <laughs> I know people have talked about this before, but Ariel realistically isn't the best role model for young girls. And don't get me wrong, I love The Little Mermaid as a product of its time, as a beautiful work of animation and music. This is a character analysis video for fun, so please don't take it too seriously. It's a lovely movie and Ariel herself has her good qualities, but taking her as a character and putting her in a real world setting, <laughs> I can only say Yikes! <laughs> I'm sorry if this sounds mean, but despite her redeeming qualities such as friendliness, bravery, and openness to other peoples no matter how different they are, I wouldn't want this person in my own close-knit friend group, you know? This isn't the kind of personality little girls should be trying to emulate, and I understand there's only so much character growth you can cram into an 85-minute movie for kids, but it could have been done so much better. It's just not an excuse in my opinion because by the end of the movie, Ariel's extremely reckless antiques and her absolute insistence to not take any responsibility for her actions are never brought up. They're never even framed as character flaws in the first place. In the end, it's her dad, her friends, and her romantic interests that run around fixing the problems she herself caused. So as we see in the movie, Ariel's a 16-year-old mermaid who is fascinated by humans, their culture, and ingenuity. She compulsively collects human tools and items and keeps them in an alcove stash hidden from her dad. You know, like an addict. Her dad, King Triton, is the powerful ruler of Atlantica and the ocean, and as you'd expect from, well, a literal king, he doesn't exactly have lots of playing with his girls. He's not only the father of his daughters, after all, he's also in a way the father of an entire nation. So needless to say, he's stressed all the time. Not only that, he's rightfully wary of humans because humans hunt and eat fish. He's got a responsibility towards his people to keep them safe from being eaten. So as an adult now, I sympathize with this guy. I can understand why he's freaked out by his daughter showing a bit too much interest in humans because, uh, when looking at it from her people's perspective, the mer people and the fish folk, she's not seeing the moral implications of her actions. That's Ariel's first serious character flaw. She doesn't care that humans are technically their predators and that many of her people were killed by them. Her father is rightfully wary and paranoid and it makes all the sense in the world that he orders his people to stay away from humans and their ships. Ariel knows all of this but chooses to do it anyway. One night, Ariel spots a ship and goes to the service and ends up watching Prince Eric playing music and immediately falls in love with him. A storm erupts, the ship sinks, and Ariel saves Eric and gets him to shore. Eric hardly remembers the ordeal, but very vaguely remembers Ariel's beautiful singing voice. Ariel sees Eric's friends rush to the shore to save him, and she for once does the smart thing and rushes back into the sea before they glimpse her. She spends her time afterwards daydreaming about Eric and her friends. Flounder and Sebastian are rightfully worried. King Triton knows something is going on, and Sebastian ends up cracking under the pressure and telling the king of Ariel's secret alcove and the whole situation with saving Eric. While King Triton's angry that his daughter disregarded his rules about getting close to humans, he really gets pissed when Ariel impulsively and not so smartly tells him she loves the human, and he goes on an angry tirade, breaking her precious collection. That for me is one of Triton's flaws. While I understand his anger, and unlike what some would say, I think his anger is justified, destroying his daughter's possessions like that is horrible and traumatizing. Ariel of course becomes heartbroken and Triton leaves her to cry while looking guilty. Alone in her vulnerable moment, Floatsam and Jetsam, Ursula's henchfish, convince Ariel to go to the Sea Witch saying that Ursula's the only one who can help her. If I can fault Ursula for many things, one of these things is not lack of integrity. And here's where we come across the second fatal flaw of Ariel's. 
impulsiveness and no consideration of consequences. Say what you want about Ursula, I know she's the villain, we all know her intentions were bad from the start, but she never lied to Ariel about the terms of the contract. She explicitly told her, verbally and in writing, that she will take her voice as payment for human legs, and if she couldn't make Prince Eric fall in love with her within three days, she's gonna turn back into a mermaid and become Ursula's prisoner. And Ariel signed the freaking contract anyway. I kid you not, I've met a seven-year-old in real life with more self-control than that. Anyway, fast forward to the point where Ariel's found by Eric's people and given a shower and then taken to have dinner with the prince where, again, she doesn't show any remorse or concern that they were literally serving fish for dinner. That dead crab sitting on her plate could have been her babysitter at some point or Sebastian's brother or cousin. It's really messed up when you think about it. Soon after, Ursula uses Ariel's voice and her magic spell to zombify Eric into marrying her instead. Ariel sits around and cries until her friends, her too-good-for-this-world friends, realize that the creepy woman who appeared out of nowhere is actually Ursula in disguise and she is motivated to get going and help them stop the wedding. Ariel's friends break the spell and she gets her voice back. Eric's no longer a zombie and he realizes Ariel was the girl who had saved him all along. The sun sets, the time to seal the deal runs out, and Ursula gets herself a new prisoner, completely within her right and abiding by her contract, I might add. Ariel, realizing that actions actually have consequences, decides the rules still don't apply to her anyway, and upon seeing her dad, who was looking everywhere for her, screams at him to help her. He tries to, but couldn't because in Ursula's words, the contract is in fact legal. Even the King of Atlantica's magic trident can't break a legal document. So he does the loving thing any parent would do and offers himself as a prisoner instead of Ariel, showing all the teenage crybabies out there that he in fact does love his daughter more than his entire kingdom. Ursula takes his trident as well and becomes the most powerful creature in the ocean. Eric intervenes to save Ariel and I almost feel bad for him because clearly he doesn't understand what's going on and the poor man doesn't know what he's marrying into. Eric ends up saving the day by poking Ursula in the stomach, defeating her and restoring all her prisoners back to what they once were, including King Triton. And I think that may be the only reason King Triton decided not to kill him, I mean, that would be dishonorable, the young man did save all their tails after all, even if it was just a side effect of defeating Ursula, technically. <laughs> Sorry, I'm ruining this. So King Triton thinks deeply about the whole situation and decides that his daughter's happiness is kind of more important than his moral code of keeping his ocean people safe. And he gives Ariel his blessing to marry Prince Eric. I like to assume that Eric, being the future king of his nation, would ban fish out of respect to his wife's father, who is also a king and has a responsibility to his own people. But I'm not holding too much hope, to be honest. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, fish tastes amazing. <laughs> Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm a softie for happy endings, okay? And like every Disney fan, I do want my Disney ending. But in terms of pure storytelling, Hans Anderson's telling of The Little Mermaid, in my opinion, blows Disney's version out of the water. It's more powerful and the themes touch your heart more profoundly. Had Disney's version been a little closer to Anderson's tale, not only would Ariel's human transformation have been physically excruciating, she would have also failed to make Eric fall in love with her and died. In Anderson's universe, mermaids have no soul, and therefore they only live and die once. So if the prince doesn't fall in love with her, and she therefore doesn't gain an eternal soul out of that love, she will die the next day and become sea foam. Ariel having another motive of becoming an eternal soul like a human would have had would have added a lot more depth and meaning to the story. And it would have made the notion of a 16-year-old falling head over heels with one of her people's predators a little less funny. The only way to survive, according to the original, would be to take a magic knife her sisters managed to get for her and stab Eric in the heart. Because if she kills him and his blood spills on her feet, she becomes a mermaid again and can continue to live for as long as her natural lifespan's originally destined to be. As you'd expect, she wouldn't be able to bring herself to do it because she loves him so much and would just let herself die. 
However, because she was a good person at heart and saved the prince's life more than once, upon her death she would be spoken to by ethereal creatures called the Daughters of the Air who tell her that she's been given a last chance at gaining a soul by doing more good and being in the presence of good people for about a few hundred years and in the end she would finally gain a soul and have an afterlife. The ending of the original tale is left there and we don't actually see a resolution or a confirmation that our mermaid really did gain a soul after that, but we're left with a lot of hope and had Disney gone with that storyline instead, they could have easily made it into a bittersweet ending given that Ariel doesn't end up marrying Eric but would still be happy and fulfilled and that would have been a great character development arc for her. So that's it for me today guys and thank you so much for watching. I hope I didn't go on and on too much. Please hit the subscribe button and like the video if you enjoyed it as this will really help me out and uh, tell me if you like to see more relaxed videos like this of me talking about my favorite movies and characters while I'm painting. Thanks so much again and I'll see you next time.